Hello and welcome to our vegetable production series with Sakata. Today, how to start a pepper. Um, if you're wondering how do you get a pepper out of the blocks and how do you get to a proper yield, check this video out. Johan, how are you doing? Fun yourself, Andre. No, good, good. Good. Right, okay, so first of all, explain to me what is a pepper? Okay, peppers are basically in the same family as what the tomatoes is, it's all Solana Sears. Uh, but we all know a green pepper, we all like to, to, to eat the green peppers. Uh, this is the plant and now we get, have to get uh, from the plant so that we can get a nice pepper. Um, so that takes a little bit of effort, uh, but yeah, this is why we're here today. Okay, so you've specifically, here we are under protection, um, but you can also plant them in the open field. I just want to know quickly, um, when would I plant them in the open field, when would I do it under protection? Okay, so there, there is definitely different varieties suited for open field production and varieties that suited more for in the, uh, under protection. Uh, it's just about how, how tall the integra uh, internodes is, how compact the plants is. It depends sometimes on fruit quality, disease resistance and all of that. We don't really refer to determinate or indeterminate. Uh, we just, I refer to the compact plants more suited to open field and then the varieties more suited to under protection. So the ones that's under protection, they will go and um, yes. they will go up the trellising. Yes. So these ropes are called trellising, by the way. It's um, so that the, the plants can go up. I've learned one or two things in the uh, previous yeah. videos. Um, so, okay, but let's, let's come back to the start. So how do I start with a pepper? Do I just go and I plant the pepper and then poof? It's there. How does it work? From, from now on, you, you will see that, okay, just, just to, to step back a little bit to get back to the trellising, we get two types of trellising. Uh, the one is the Dutch method and the other one is the Spanish method. This is the Dutch method. So we've got the strings, the trellising strings, and they are hanging from the, the wires up, up at the top. And we basically start off with the pepper and we want to trellis it to two stems with maybe yeah. some side branches, but two stems. The Spanish method is not, you don't have the strings from the top, you just have the strings on the, on the, uh, on the side of the plants. Then you need additional poles, but that's more, more for net house production. But that's a two so different systems. So that's almost systems. like grapes? Almost, almost. Ah, okay. uh, so you've, 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 you build a trellising system and your plant grows in between that. You can, to a certain extent, do some pruning on that as well, to maybe take it to three stems just to get the plant a little bit high. But uh, if you want, you don't have to do pruning on the Spanish system. But here, you must stay on top of the trellising and the pruning. Otherwise, you are... Why do problems. I want to trellis it? Why don't I just leave it so that it grows? You will have a massive yield on this. The plant will be elongated because you're removing all the side shoots. So they tend to grow for the roof. Yep. So you will have a long plant and that it will not be able to stand on itself. So you have to support it. And then it, then it goes and it lies down and all my peppers are in the, the ground. Yes. Yeah, so okay. you, you, on, on peppers, you cannot fall behind with the trellising. Once you fall behind with the trellising, you will have a yield uh, impact on your yield, which is negative. Okay, and when I, so when I, and, and coming back to when I plant, what do I plant? plant do I plant the seed? Do I plant the pepper? Do I plant the rootstock or the seedlings okay. or what with do this, I do? Uh, only, only normal seedlings. So we don't plant the seed. The nursery plants the seed. Yep. They give you a plant. And normally what I would say is uh, about 10, 10 to 12 uh, centimeters or 100 to 120 millimeters. That's the, the height of the plant uh, without the seedling plug and you transplant the seedling plug in the medium and then you grow off. I like to start off with pepper seedlings as early as I can. Uh, basically, uh, my rule of thumb, and it, it's not everyone's rule of thumb, but my rule of thumb is I want to have two true leaves on the pepper plant. Then I know that the plant is well established and once it, you transplant it, that plant just wants to grow. Very important there. You're talking about true leaves. Yes. What's the difference between an? Uh, is there a, is there a false leaf then? <laughs> it's just your it's just your your cotyledons or your small seedling leaves. The first leaves that the uh, the plant makes. That's just basically coming out of the seed, and you've got the cotyledons, and then there's maybe one or two other leaves, but they are very small. They don't uh, yep. grow bigger. So I want the what we say then is the two true leaves. That is that would look like this when it expands. So um, that's the first two true leaves. If your seedling has got that, 
then you can transplant. Then you can because then it's 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 got roots and it's not yes. only um, dependent on the nutritional value of the seed. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. So and that that is that is very important. What we want to get to is. Uh, the balance of the plant. For me, balance of the pepper plant is very critical. You want to look at how tall my plant is, how much leaves I've got, and when do I set my fruit. If you plant a ceiling with those two true leaves, then you'll get a nice first flower or a king flower, and then with each internode, you will start setting fruit. If your plant is too old, if you plant old seedlings, you tend to have almost immediately after transplanting, you will start setting that king flowers then your plant is not really well established yet. So then it needs to put all the effort in producing uh, roots and growing, and it doesn't focus on producing the energy for the fruit. I'm so I, I'm, I prefer small seedlings ready to go, then the plant gets established before the first flower sets. And then you've got the option um, of removing that king flower. Here we have not uh, done that yet. But you can see my plant is, is uh, quite nice, well established, good internodes, good leaf canopy. So what we will do now is we will start taking out the, the first because flower. Because what, what you're telling me now, it's like maths in school. It's like um, some of the other vegetables, they are like standard grade. This is like higher grade, this which is, you're this, talking yes, about yes, now. Yes. This is a so, little, little bit higher grade, but it's, it's, if you can, if you can um, handle the ratio one to five, you're more or less waxed. Uh, <laughs> but what I mean that, by that is, I please want, explain. I want five leaves, five true leaves yes. for each flower that I set. Oh. And if I, if I get that ratio, then I know I'm doing something right. If I go outside of that ratio, if I have five leaves but I have three flowers, then I know that my ratio is not uh, um, perfect for sustaining the growth that the the, the reserves have. Because if each, I have more each, leaves. Am, am I right to say each each leaf is basically part of the factory? Yes. And that because that gets energy from the sun yes. and it's photosynthesis and so forth and gets the sugars, converts the sugars. Yes. And you need five leaves, five factories, one flower. Basically, five factories, yes. one flower. Yes. So that's the that's my my ratio, my ideal ratio. If there's if it's a little bit off, it's not a big train smash. But that's basically what I aim for. So if I go to the plant, I would start counting my, my yep. leaves and then I would count my flowers. And for instance, here you would see that there's one, two, three, four, five leaves. But here I've got two flowers. Yep. So then I would start taking out the, the so king So I flower. need to physically take this thing yes. off. Yes, you can I take it off. I need to physically take it off and go yes. like, Wee, there you go. There we go. Throw it away. Then you can look at the, the next state, what we call the station. So here we've already broken out, we are going to trellis this to two stems. We've taken out the third stem and now we've got two main stems. And here the, the, at each internode the stem divides again. So with this one, depending on the ratio and depending on what you want, you can either terminate the, the, the stem there or you can terminate it at a later stage where you just break out this growing point for instance. Then you can see that you can set the extra fruit on this stem and here, if this uh, plant sustains the growth, you've got one, two, three, four, there's five leaves on this stem, and that should sustain the, the fruit here. If you look here, there's small buds opening there. Yep. I will remove that, because I don't want the side shoots to be too tall. So I would remove that uh, once, once you can get in there. But for the rest, you look at each internode. If you start seeing that with your fertilizer, irrigation, climate, that you are setting more fruit, then you start need to start taking those flowers out. You can adjust your fertilizer, maybe put in a, a little bit more additional nitrogen to produce the cannabis. Nitrogen is important for your vegetative growth. If you see that um, you've got too much leaves and not setting enough fruit, then you need to cut down on your nitrogen to stimulate the reproductive phase, which is the flowers. I'm with you. So the short and the long of it is, um, and and I mean when you when you look at peppers, it's I think it's easy to to go and say okay, I'm going to plant peppers, but it is really really an intensive crop yes. in terms of the management of that because if you're not going to do the management properly like you showed me just now, yes. first of all trellising, make sure that you always on time with your trellising and then secondly um, taking off the flowers that shouldn't be there, make sure that you've got um, X amount of peppers per plant. If you're not going to do that, 
you at the end of the day uh, you're not going to have a proper yield and um, it's not worth it so instead of going and plant a lot of peppers rather plant less but do it properly am i correct when basically I'm that? yes and it's all about uh, yield per square meter inside the tunnels so you've got the structure you need to pay for the structure uh, and what we uh, what we aim for here and that's how you train your labor as well to have a dedicated eye if you see any uh, fruit that for instance has not pollinated because you do get that under certain conditions although it's self-pollinated uh, but again under cool conditions the pollinate pollen is not that uh, uh, live and they do not pollinate the fruit well so then you get either flat fruit or misshapen fruit and we want to move remove that as soon as possible even if it's a, a pepper a very small pepper we tend to remove that and give the plant the opportunity to set another fruit because it's got the ability to do that so for this yield per square meter you want to have optimal harvestable yield we cannot afford in a, in a tunnel to have a uh, misshapen fruit or fruit with uh, um, blossom end rot or anything like that if you see that remove it as quickly as possible to give the plant the chance to set more fruit uh, as it go goes along ideally how many peppers per plant on average that depends uh, tell me it's a depending it says it how long is a piece of string type thing. basically <laughs> yes so it, it depends on your growing season uh, some some growers prefer to do a short cycle but you can if, if you just work out you can have basically on each internode which is about 100 millimeters apart uh, you can have at least one fruit one to two fruit and um, that fruit normally weighs about uh, 200 to 250 grams um, so you can do the calculation but we want at least to be in the region of uh, 200 tons per hectare so if you calculate Ooh, that 200 tons per two, hectare 200 tons per hectare that's a crazy amount of peppers yes normally in open field you aim for 60 to 80 uh, there's growers that can achieve a little bit higher but yeah we want to have maximum yields so we aim for about 200 tons of peppers and that is very very uh, um, realistic if you've got a, a longer season you can't expect 200 tons on a short plant but if you've got a long enough season you do your management well you break out all the uh, non-marketable fruit give the plant fertilizer uh, maintain the balance of the plant those types of yields are, is, is very possible awesome Johan thank Perfect. you very much thanks right so apparently 200 tons per hectare peppers who knew um really important this is a higher grade plant if i can put it like that um so you need to focus otherwise you're going to make losses so make sure that you've got the resources you've got the labor to be able to get to all these things in time otherwise the crop will just run away from you and uh, you will not have a proper yield and at the end of the day you'll make a loss and that's not what we want hence why we're doing uh, the video so make sure when you plant peppers you start right you do it in the correct manner and uh, i think more importantly get in contact with sakata so that um, they can come and assist you when you're doing that capital outlay to make sure that your uh, money goes into the into the right places at the end of the day if you've got any questions comment below uh, we'll also put a link up here on top or below depending on where you're watching and then you can get in contact with Sakata. That's it from our vegetable production series. Till next time. Cheers.